falling slowly. You planned this, you big fat jerk! She yelled at the Demon King. I plan to corner you until you run out of time and your talisman can no longer hold in your dark side, thus you becoming the queen again? That doesn't sound like something I would do. Terracuda faked innocence. This only served to make Jade more angry. Yes, it is! I bet you were the one who told Drago where to find us, too. She crossed her arms as she continued to accuse him. He simply gave a gleeful chuckle. Now that I may have done. But in my defense, he would have found you anyways. It could have been when you were in public with civilians around who he could hurt, or it could have been in your closet and you get burned to a crisp as soon as you open it. My hand in the attack simply put you in a much more open area with no bystanders and no way to pull a surprise on you. He stated smoothly. Her anger simmered immediately. That was true. Are you... protecting me? She asked in disbelief and confusion. Terracudo didn't answer her. He turned around and floated to the other pieces of work in the room, pretending to be interested in them. This effectively hit his smirking face and gave Jade time to ponder on her own question. When she really thought about it, it made sense. He wanted her to turn demon again. He wanted her to help him bring darkness over the world. He didn't want Shendu's son to kill her because he needs her, or at least wants her to help him. She sat down on the floor and leaned her back against the wall. Was it bad that it made her happy that someone wanted her to help them with something important? She knew it was just her want to be wanted, her fear of not being wanted or needed, that made her happy that someone wanted her, even if it was a demon lord of darkness. It was part of her craving for attention, too. Terracudo knew these things about her, things Jackie didn't seem to understand. No. She whispered out loud to herself. I need to stop that line of thinking right now. I know better than to let these thoughts play out. Especially right now. She grabbed her necklace and tightly squeezed the pendant she had made. It was the only thing keeping her shadow powers from coming back and taking her over. It was the only thing keeping her humanity in control. It was her only hope of getting out of here as herself. And it was almost all black now. Her two backups she had made were still at home sitting in her dresser under her socks. She figured she would have until midnight to switch this one out so she could just do it when she got home from school. But Jackie decided to pick her up and then made her stay with him while he worked the rest of the day. She didn't see it as being a big problem. But she also didn't think a long-winded battle that would trap them in the museum until late night would transpire. Drago had his goons jump on them when Jackie was locking up for the night, and Drago himself seemed keen on hunting her down to kill her. She had been dodging him in a deadly game of hide-and-seek for over an hour now. It was 11 p.m. She had one hour left until her necklace would fail to suppress her dark side. She had made the necklace after she discovered Terracudo's mark had reappeared on her leg one morning two months ago. She changed her outfit to black leggings with jean shorts and a short-sleeved orange shirt to hide the mark from her uncles. It was hot outside still, so no one questioned her outfit change. She tried making the potion uncle had made last time so she could just remove it herself, but it didn't work. She did some research into Japanese history to find anything else to fight the evil her mark bore and found a way to make a talisman to protect oneself's chi. The special white wood bark was supposed to absorb dark chi from the wearer's aura when the Japanese symbol of light was carved into it. As soon as she made it and put it on, she could feel its effects. It had been five days since the mark appeared, and she had been struggling to maintain her humanity and keep it all a secret from her family. The talisman turned a light gray after five minutes of wearing it. She felt more in control than she had all week and less afraid of herself. She decided to make another one for when this one would be full. The book had said, depending on the amount and speed of the absorption, that it should last until the carved symbol started to turn black. 
She had been tracking the progression ever since she had come to realize it would only last her about two more weeks. She made a third one just in case and put both the second and the third ones in her sock drawer so she could swap them out when she needed to, but not to be seen by anyone else. She kept the necklace hidden under her shirt collar and out of sight to avoid questions. She never said a word to Jackie or Uncle when their past enemies started to appear. She never said a word about it when she knew for a fact that Terracudo had to be watching them. She never said anything when Jackie noticed she couldn't use the Chinese talismans anymore and had blamed it on her not wanting to use them because they were so last season, and she was over it. She let them believe her attitude and style change were all her becoming a teenager. She had just turned 14 the day this started. Instead of it being a cover-up for her struggle to stay human and keep her dark powers at bay. 